welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm Nikki Wallman. Gilroy Shama is an acclaimed musician, artist and writer and is a goodwill ambassador for the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Muslim countries. His artistic work incorporates world music sounds together with the poetry of the Jewish heart, African rhythms side by side with electronic beats. Within his music, we find that the ancient touches the futuristic and cultures meet beyond space and time. My mother came from a family that came to Israel from Vilna, and my father born in Cairo. So uh, in my house, from one uh, one side of the speaker, we heard Abed El Wahab and Um Kultum and Arabic music, and on the other side, we heard like Israeli post-Russian, Israeli good boy singing, and in the middle, I had my. David Bowie and uh, Bob Dylan scene. So some, somehow I was uh, grown up on the need to feed myself with, with, with all the substances that my soul and my body is built out from. And I have a lot of honor and respect to the traditional way of presenting music, which is not one man in the front and all the rest behind, like a Western way of band, is more a circle thing and uh, with a very deep meaning for intention and tuning. Because the makamat, when you play the Eastern music, you have to be tuned, not just on the technical thing in the instrument, it's also emotional and mental and physical thing. So actually the music made me not able to fake my art. And this is why I chose music as my path first, because always I will be student. You can never be a, a real master in the music world. It's just the ego thing. You can always meet other guy or a girl that can teach you. And uh, I needed it. <laughs> One of the biggest uh, problems we have here is that we are not able many times to, to see the other as part of us. And it's a, a very deadly disease. And a big part of music role in society is to have a music that everyone dance with no different, everyone feel with no difference, even if you're Jew and you're Muslim, if a woman sing from her heart, they both will have goosebumps. And this goosebumps is God, not the concept they have in their, in their head. So actually to find what's still in this generation of reality and TV and computers, what, what make us goosebumps, really? What make us feel? And it's a, it's, a, it's a big journey to do it in Jerusalem, and I learned a lot about myself, about music, and about what's sacred. Because many times people can find sacredness in buildings, and they are very afraid to search for it in someone that is different than them. <laughs> Music is a kind of a grandmother of all of us. It's one of the most ancient forms of uh, the human family ceremony. It co contains within it the essence of community, of family, of holidays, and uh, a lot of secrets dealing with the alchemy of harmony, listening, sharing, and uh, this what grabbed me in music more than the career and the stage and the crowd and the fame, the secrets that hidden within the healing side and the, and the expressive side 
within music, this captured me because I have a very deep need to express my love, my inner world, and I saw music as a big opportunity also to deal in life with something that helped me to repair my life and my body and my time, you know, to spend time with something that rise me up and help me to be a better person. The definition of happiness is a state of well-being characterized by emotions ranging from contentment to intense joy. Philosophers and religious thinkers tend to define happiness in terms of living a good life or flourishing rather than simply as an emotion. Today Rabbi Hecht explains the Jewish concept of happiness and how we can apply it into our daily lives. The Kabbalah would insist that beyond being a right, happiness in fact is an obligation. Simply put, we live as interdependent beings and our behavior and state of mind affect the people around us either negatively or positively. Therefore, it's incumbent upon us to have that positive influence on those around us. This is true when it comes to our relationships with other people, and it's true in our relationship with God as well. And thus we have a verse that states, if do et Hashem besimcha, we are to serve God joyfully. Now, usually when we think of religious service, we might conjure up an image of silent devotion or some type of more somber setting, but joy and happiness is not the first image. And yet the Kabbalah insists that happiness is a religious imperative and should color the way we go about doing everything in life. An additional advantage to maintaining a happy disposition is that we are just that much stronger to face challenges. We can draw on our innate strength to overcome any challenges that we may face. But how do we achieve happiness? Why does it seem to be so elusive? So some would say that success leads to happiness. The Kabbalah would tell us that happiness actually leads to success. We all know it. By accumulating more material stuff, we never really achieve happiness. But at the same time, we don't always live it because most of us tend to go out and indulge on certain things with the sense that this is going to make us feel a, a little bit happier. So in a sense, happiness ensues when we are unencumbered by concerns of this world and negative experiences. So how do we achieve this? Kabbalah speaks of really two types of experiences in life. There are experiences which are good in a revealed way and then there are experiences which are good but that goodness is concealed often experienced as something negative but being that we believe that god is the soul and the essence of all of existence everything that emanates from god essentially is good now this by no means is to try and justify suffering or, or tragedy but if we're a little bit more objective about our experience, we may note our blessings. Those things that we have that we definitely should be grateful for. So the first thing in reframing is to shift our attention to those things that we ought to be grateful for and to express that gratitude for life, limb, shelter, food, and further, we can start to understand that every experience really comes from a good place. And if we can view it in that way, we no longer 
held back so much by the negativity of that experience. Consider this for a moment. If you come across a sad or depressed child, it's bound to surprise you. On the other hand, a happy child doesn't surprise anyone. Conversely, a sad or depressed adult doesn't surprise anyone, but a sprightly, happy adult somehow raises our eyebrows. The Kabbalah sees this as an indication that essentially, innately, we are happy beings. If we can just shed some of those anxieties, the troubles that we bring on ourselves, we can allow our true inner happiness to ensue that enables us to live a more full life and to achieve greater success in our living. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you'd like to watch any of our previous shows, they are available for you on our website at www.spiritsister.co.za. And of course, we love hearing your comments and suggestions. So find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions. As always, from me, Nikki, and the team, shalom and have a safe and peaceful week. <laughs>